How's everyone doing tonight? Um, pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. How about that sports yeah. ball game the other night, huh? I love the sports ball. Sports ball. Oh man, sports ball. Everybody does that. I'm sure. Hey everybody, welcome to Endgame with your host, Popo, and guest host, Al Boy. Tonight, I believe we're going to be talking about simulation theory, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know what's real. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Mm. Thanks, uh -huh. Verona, for that lovely introduction. Uh, yeah, so tonight, um, standing in for Psych is our boy. Uh, Psych oh. is off doing uh, some very, he's off at a conference or something, very, doing some very academic, researchy stuff, uh, so he can't mm -hmm. join us tonight. But, um, uh, so uh, tonight we are going to talk about simulation theory. Uh, although, one thing I'm going to get out of the way is that it's not theory in, like, scientific sense it could be more uh uh accurately called a simulation hypothesis but but whatever the yeah. you know, simulation theory is how everybody knows it um oh boy do you have a good summary of like where this idea came from oh boy uh well as far as where it came from um i think lots of people have thought about uh this kind of concept of like is everything a simulation are we living in a computer uh for a long time uh but more recently oh i don't i don't remember his name i don't have my notes up do you have the notes up i have uh, some notes up i don't have the name of the dude though the ancestor group ah, simulation guy uh, uh his name doesn't matter Ostrom? it's the idea that's important yes well it's anyway Ostrom? he he posited yeah there you go i think that sounds right uh he posited a, a cohesive theory about uh civilizations like ours that don't destroy themselves uh, and assuming that technology can keep progressing and progressing like we've been experiencing it recently, that eventually you get to a point where it's maybe plausible that a civilization could could uh, simulate like a universe or part of a universe or something like that, right? Yeah, um, and, and I'm part, part of out, so. part, well, part of that specifically is that um, he. Yeah, I, something that kind of, um, I think, kind of peculiar about his claim is that he says it's more likely that we're in a simulation simply because of the fact that we exist. Because it basically, it's his his idea is all about probabilities. So if we exist and civilization is able to progress to the point uh, someday that it creates simulations, then there will end up being more simulations than there are physical realities. Which means that if we exist, at, like, over the scope of all of time, we are more likely to be in a simulation than not, if those, like, things are true. Which I think is an interesting an interesting way to look at, I guess, I don't know, probabilities. And I, I'm, I don't know if the actual statistical math holds up, but it's um, basically his, his propositions kind of uh, allow, or at least brought up the kind of uh, conversation that can happen around it. Um, but obviously, like, there, there's this is, there's other ways to think about this, too, like uh, from popular culture, like you know, like like the Matrix. One of the weird, one of the weird things about how you just positioned it, where there's lots and lots of simulations going on, is that means that there's, there's a chance that uh, there's actually far 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 more simulated people or entities in the collective universes or whatever i don't even know how to talk about it than uh like non-simulated beings or at least that's the theory with but like i don't know i don't understand how any of it i don't i don't understand how you calculate like because like isn't this like infinity like like are we thinking is that part of the statistics like the scale of infinity does that play into effect like i don't i don't how does that work as far as like um, how infinity, many of these infinity? could be around infinity. oh okay. uh, i mean at some point well, the physical... universe and how many space like because when you talk about like how many like other civilizations might be like in our universe like the probability of like habitable planets those are like we're finding more and more every day like all of these different uh civilizations that might be out there just in our universe like and if the universe is infinite 
like there's infinite civilizations in our universe, right? Like, or is infinity even, a silly concept? Well, I I think even the universe being infinite doesn't necessarily mean that it has infinite resources inside of it. Like, its ah. its energy is finite, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if uh, it's, unless the universe is infinite, or is yeah, is most of that infinity empty? Well, I don't. I think I don't think infinite space implies infinite energy. Okay. Um, that that's my understanding. Like the Big Bang happened and like injected all the uni all the energy into our universe, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and so that's the amount of energy we have. I that's my understanding of it. But um, you know, was the Big Bang just just when we turned the computer on? You know, mm -hmm. uh, is is yeah. So one thing I ran across that I thought was hilarious uh, was the concept that like people talk about uh, the universe uh, being expanding like expanding from the Big Bang and it's continuing to expand now. Um, the thought that maybe like the expanding universe is because the simulation is still loading in. It's not quite all loaded yet. You know? <laughs> um, that's just a weird, like fun thing to think about. I like that. I like that actually. So, <laughs> I, so with the end with the loading, with the full loading of the simulation would be when the universe ends. Or just when it stops expanding? I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. But, but if if it is when it ends, and we think about like what we think the universe ending will be is like the heat death, and like there's no more energy, and that's all gone, does that mean it's it was loading the whole time, or that it was just playing back? Yeah, I, I don't know. And and it's and then and on one hand, it's like sort of silly to speculate on that kind of thing because we can only think about these concepts as like parallels to other concepts like the like even the concept of loading something yeah like loading a simulation doesn't even make sense to us until uh the 20th century um right. and and up to that point uh you know how would you even illustrate that concept um i don't know which uh... which is kind of part of like part of what i find interesting about simulation theory is that it, it uh it does allow for, like, further extrapolation of questions about our existence and the nature of the universe that maybe we didn't have access to ideas about before because mm -hmm. we didn't have ide any ideas about computing before computers existed. Yeah, that analogy about germs, um, I think, like, is something that's interesting. Like, the a similar thing is, like, how... There was a time when we didn't know what germs was, and maybe it was just a theory. And some people thought, "Oh, yeah, that's what that's what's causing disease and stuff, and why it spreads and why you get sick." And other people thought that was just ridiculous and absurd, and they mocked the doctors and people who thought that that was that was what was going on. Um, but once once we had that as a thing to think about, it allowed us to look at the whole the, everything differently, um, and 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 just understand things differently knowing right. that that exists yeah so when, when we can uh when i guess culture uh, eventually evolves to the point that it can provide us with a new conceptual model for something um it helps us think about you know whatever that uh, whatever the topic is in a different way um and i think yeah i think computers do the same way because there's also a similar uh one of the things that we'd um that that we that we touched on when we were look, you know researching this stuff is that like uh, there's physicists basically observe the universe um, and they can condense a whole bunch of what happens into mathematics, which essentially means that the universe is doing this mathematical computation, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just in the in the process of existing, and so uh, so because we've we've you know got equations and, and know about computing we can we can think about the the universe in terms of algorithms and and um computation where maybe we we couldn't before and it was maybe a little more mystical oh, uh, Pika, do you have a question yeah i have two actually um uh one yeah. it, iterate on your mathematics um so if if everything is calculated um mathematically so, how does the simulation theory deal with the uh, concept of pi? 
because it's endless. It's, it's infinite. Back to that infinite question. Mm. And then, and then also, like, uh, how do they deal with? Um, well, how does your computer deal with pi? How do our computers? How do our shitty ass computers that can't it's, simulate? It's always rounded. Deal with pi. Yeah, exactly. It is always, yeah. And then they also um, does uh, simulation theory. Does it also stem from um, you know quantum mechanics when you get on to beyond gluons and quarks and stuff? Where you know what actually makes up gluons and quarks? Like that weird like bubbly void stuff that I don't I'm, sure. I don't even understand. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so and, and that's uh, uh, definitely kind of an open question. I did read a interesting uh, blog post about about theory that about simulation theory that talked about um, how you there's like you definitely couldn't do reality simulation with a bitwise computer like the kind that we use. Um, maybe you could do it with a quantum computer, but probably not even then. Um, so I think kind of one of the fundamental assumptions of it is that that we would progress to the point where uh you know we just have the technology that can handle that kind of sophistication um but i mean a similar topic though is the a, an unanswered question at least is the question of um consciousness like we don't know how to generate consciousness in like deliberately it's happened to us but it but it's not something we know how to make and and it's not guaranteed that trying to simulate life would result in consciousness and so that's kind of another one of the assumptions of this at least this version of the simulation theory that says that we are um that we are like living as conscious beings in a simulated environment and then um but outside of that is the real world on, on uh, the flip side though me... let's say let's say i had uh, a, a magical tablet um and, and an app on my tablet all right and in, in this ta uh, this app, I had a scan of your brain, and I could 3D pick any part of the brain that I wanted to stimulate. And I just go willy-nilly stimulating various parts of the brains. Is the consciousness mm -hmm. yours? I was asked what it means. Uh, what if I start... You said it what was... If... There... What? Are you, say are you saying that if, that if the brain is influenced by external factors, that it's not, that it, the con that it's not your consciousness? Is it? I think you're getting. I think you're. I think you're talking about that. That whole. That whole thing about like if a machine was able to completely disassemble you, transmit you as data, and then reassemble you, is that the same person? Yes, conscious like, uploading. A copy the, of a. Yeah, yeah. Is a copy of the same. Is that you? Right. Like, that's that. That's the whole problem with like uploading your brain to the internet. Did you really go to the internet, or is there a copy up there and you're still here? And then. It's, it's an unanswered philosophical question of like where yeah. the locus of perception actually is, like like where mm -hmm. that exists, because because we know there is a locus because we observe it daily, but we don't know w where it is or how it's generated or or where it derives from. And so actually another another version of simulation theory is not that we are just simulated beings inside of a computer program, but that we are partially simulated beings that will. Uh, that, that we like went into a simulated experience and when we die we'll come back out of it uh so and there's actually i i mean there's a few different versions of that and uh ghoster was talking before the show about the parallels between dreams and uh, like dreams and simulation theory right because every night mm. our dream our brains do, do put us in a simulation they sim it simulates reality and then we run around inside of it and and we don't know any different. We don't, we don't think that it's not, you know, real until until we wake up or until we come become lucid. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So so I like those parallels. Um, PK. Well, about what he was saying, and kind of in, on the subject, uh, not what I was going to ask, but uh, the way I used to like, I used to have a hard time figuring out whether like if you uploaded yourself, is that you or a copy of you? And then mm -hmm. I thought about how when you go wake up every day, is that the same person or are you a new version of yourself? But the way I see it now that kind of helps me is mm -hmm. I see as our consciousness as like it's a calculation based on all these factors of our body and mind. So it's just calculating a version of yourself. So if you have a copy, it would calculate the exact same thing for a while until influence changes it. So to me, my opinion is like every day we're just like whatever 
our consciousness is what our body equals, if that makes any sense. So I don't know, that just kind of helped me. I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, I, about what I, yeah. was, what I was gonna- Interesting fact. Oh, I, I was just going to talk about. Where did you have something oh, to sorry. say to that? No, I was I was starting to cough and then I muted myself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead, PK. Uh, I just want to talk about like different kinds of simulation. Like the simulation theory that Bostrom and talks about is is I guess future humans, which um, that seems to be like a the most plausible one, but there could be a versions. We could be just like an alien simulation of not that looks nothing like us. Create some sort of uh, organic. I mean, you're basically creating another universe, but it's some whatever computer they have, and then life yeah. grows from it. We could just be some exotic life inside of this, and they may yeah, be watching true. us, and they may not be. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if that's called like, simulation theory or not. I think it's a version of it. Either way is a thing to think about. And to be clear for everybody who maybe don't know, the ancestor version is the thought that like humans way in the future, advanced humans like are simulating this time in the past and we're, we're experiencing yeah. it. You know um, why that seems implausible to me though? Is like, it seems to me more likely that you can simulate, you can make a simulation of reality, but with not as high fidelity as the reality that you yourself experience you know exist in like we it goes back to the dreams we, analogy well uh, yeah a little bit um but also just like computation power in order to simulate mm. a universe that has the exact same properties of our universe we'd need a universally infinite like amount of yeah. memory and processing yeah, power like we'd need but... We'd need a universe to, to simulate an action, you know, to simulate a universe with the kind of fidelity uh, of, of the same universe. Because, like, our universe has a lot of fidelity. We can go really, really deep into it and look at qubits and look at, you know, all these quantum particles. And, like, those, are, those still have consistency. They have, uh, you know, they have cohesion. They're not, uh, you know, to, to some extent as far as we can see like they follow they follow rules and so whatever simulating that has to have i i don't know like maybe... one thing about that uh, th no. there was i mean Sorry. on that subject there was some research that came out i think last year that was looking down at some at, at physics and they claimed that it passed a bit of shade on the simulation theory because they thought they what dug down deeper than we should be able to in a simulation. I forgot, I don't remember the details, but... Mm. That sounds possible. So, uh, well, I guess, a quick comment for me, but we have a really long line, um, so tonight we'll probably want to keep our our questions and or statements brief, and if yes. you have, like, two questions, hop back in line, uh, just so we can go through everybody, because a lot of people, like, everybody's excited about this topic, and it's really cool. Yeah, it's the, a fun the, idea. The, the, the thought about like having the the processing power and all of that like the thing that i think is like unprovable and just like you can just go well what about is well what if the outer layer is like a totally different universe that we can't comprehend and blah blah blah, blah sure. you know so sure. and they've got like these this this magical whatever and i don't know you know so yeah, that's the problem with the whole thing right the more speculative it gets the more fantasy it gets and then it I don't yeah. know. To me, it becomes less interesting to talk about the more speculative you have to get because you yeah. have to assume so many things on top of other things. But anyway, yeah. uh, Ig anyway. Igriam, is that how you say your name? Igriam, yeah. And you actually kind of just read my mind there on what I was going to say. Let's say, let's say you had okay. like an, let's say you had like an NPC, and the NPC is in a a relatively advanced video game and the NPC is so advanced that the NPCs figure out how to do all these science experiments and to examine the game they're in. <laughs> well, the NPCs are going to uh -huh. examine it and they're going to see, oh, this thing's made out of a bunch of tiny polygons that are a little bit hard to see, but the polygons are here. And then they're going to go ahead and teach all their children that everything is made up of polygons and stuff like that. How do we uh. know it's not the same thing for us? How do we know mm -hmm. that our atoms is not the building blocks of some computer system built on a higher dimension where let's say they don't even have atoms they have something else and in us as the sure. npc in this case is never going to be able to tell the difference between the not very high fidelity simulated environment versus the high fidelity because to us this is how oh, yeah. high fidelity things are you can't get any more detailed than this even if maybe you yeah. can and we've just 
not been able to comprehend it. So mm-hmm. then, That's a fascinating so my, idea. So my question about that then is like at the higher level of reality, do they stop seeing building blocks entirely? Or or does just at some level the building blocks just happen to be real, but at all the other levels they're all fake? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, I found it fascinating the the concept of like some the parent reality to ours like having an even higher fidelity and the idea that like they would think that we have like the equivalent of screen door effect like our perception to them <laughs> is just trash i don't know <laughs> yeah i mean definitely like if, 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 if they're watching us in the same way we watch like little video game sprites on a on a screen you know we, we can see everything but but the same is true when they talk about higher dimensional uh beings right like people uh or, or beings that are supposed supposedly outside of time can see like all like all of time happening at, at once and so that they you know if you if you think about that particular idea of dimensionality which time may or may not factor into but anyway i'm getting a little off topic uh how's he How's the volume this time? Sounds good. Works. All fixed. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I had multiple questions, so I'm going to ask the one of them, which is the shorter one, and then I'm going to get back in line, and maybe we'll get the second one okay. if not. Uh, so the, what I, <laughs> uh, the most common argument I've heard for simulation theory, and I missed the beginning uh, because I was resetting my mic, so if you've already covered this, this is what I'm curious about. But I have heard that the argument made for simulation theory is that uh, because... Uh, let me see if I can paraphrase it. Because it is eventually possible for us to simulate reality, the assumption is that we already have. Basically, looking at yeah. the... Th- that's that's the argument, right? Is that because we believe that we could someday get to the point where we can simulate reality, that has already happened and this is a simulation. That's one of the arguments yes, I heard. That's, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's something I, I brought up um, uh, at the beginning, although I worded it... Uh, you, 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 that's a better your, wording. Your wording yeah. uh, probably makes more sense. But yeah, the... Okay. Uh, but it's more likely that we're in a simulation if it's possible for reality right. to be simulated. So my, my question, my opinion, yeah, well, my question about that has always been, uh, if you accept that premise, uh, why do you only take it one level? Because essentially, if you're saying that if we can simulate reality, uh, obviously we are simulating it right now. But if that's true, that means we are being simulated in reality. But if that's true, why didn't the reality that is simulating us how do we know that's not also a simulation and that Sims reality is being down. simulated so sims all the yeah, way down exactly like like once you make the <laughs> argument that yeah but basically that, so that's what i'm curious about like once you make that argument and you say that if we can if it is possible someday to simulate reality we must already be doing so i think it can be uh, i don't think that argument necessarily holds water because then that means essentially uh, simulations Cascades. go on forever it's mm-hmm. cascades yeah mm-hmm. so anyway i just i would like your thoughts on that or thoughts from other people and then i'm going to go back the line it's like a, it's like a nightmare where you keep waking up and you keep thinking, "Oh, I'm awake now. Oh, I'm awake now." Yeah. Oh, yeah, has that ever actually happened to you? It's very annoying. I've never experienced that, and I I don't know that I've ever had dreams quite as vivid. And and I've never had a lucid dream, so I've never experienced like the direct like um, simulation theory and or VR uh, like analogy firsthand. I've had pretty vivid dreams, but usually they're really focused, and I can't see people very well. I don't know. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's two the levels of it, right? Because because you have had dreams, and in those dreams, like you think it's reality in that dream, which means it was a more effective simulation than yeah. someone who wakes up in the middle of their dream and is like, "Wait a second, this isn't real." Yeah. Uh, so if we're in a simulation, it must be a very effective one because I certainly haven't. Well, you know, gone outside of it, not for lack of trying. Uh, hey, Verona? Yeah, uh, I've got a couple of thoughts. I'll try to keep them all very, very brief. Um, the idea that, um, going back a little bit, going back to the idea that uh, uh, the question of who you are if, when, when it comes to simulation, uh, I think I think that idea was, is also basically the same premise of the clone issue of, of clone people. Um, I would say philosophically that's not necessarily unanswered it's highly disagreed upon <laughs> i think some people a lot of people think they sure. have the answer uh i yeah of i think some people are right personally um i won't get into that because it'll take too much time uh but going on um, i'm glad Lautzi was in front of me because he mentioned basically something that i was mentioned uh which is the premise of the idea of the simulation theory being 
that um, you have to assume that we already, or that we can, that we will have the ability to simulate in the future. Um, but you've already been doing a lot of talking about how that might not even be possible, even getting to quantum computers. We might not be able to simulate reality to the point where we get consciousness and beings inside of them, you know, like to the level that we have now. So it just doesn't look likely. But um, I guess the last thing I was going to think about was uh, I kind of grew up with the idea that the nature of reality was simulation, not not in the sense of like simulation theory being simulated by a computer, but just in, in like the, your brain is simulating reality to have an experience. Like experience yeah. is simulation, sure. you know, yeah. it's like it goes mm -hmm. together. You just can't have reality without simulation. That's like what it is. Um, and I think and then also simulation. Simulation theory like helps us like think about it, right? Because it's hard to talk to someone, or it it gives you more tools to talk to someone about that sort of idea um, when when we have things like VR and when we have things like uh, you know video games and, and stuff like that. Because um, yeah, I was telling Alboy this earlier, but like some there are some uh, you know belief systems throughout the world that are about the like about the idea that reality is an illusion and so you know to to you need to transcend the illusion and everything and so like, I was that's, gonna say. that's one that's one way of getting at it and then another way of getting at it is thinking about it through uh or just through the lens of of simulation theory and and yeah you're right like our our brain uh is is yeah. perception is is being simulated for us by our brain yeah. that's receiving all this input yeah because we have all this data coming into our eyes and our ears and our skin and our nose and all of that but our brain is making it cohesive into this thing in our head like our perception yeah. is exists in us and that's a reconstruction and uh yeah know, this cohesive right it's cohesive and it, for creates some reason. A, <laughs> it creates a model it, it create, create creates a a yeah like a perceptual model of the universe and like mm -hmm. um and we'll even do predictive activity through that uh yeah there's um, top top down cognitive processing is basically about yeah. that where like it yeah it predicts what is actually occurring based on the model that it's built of reality Yep, there's some thoughts about like like vision, like the things you see, like a certain large percentage of it is just predicted and assumed by the brain. Like mm -hmm. that the that's why we like see faces and things and stuff. Like just sure. pattern matches to that. Like as a shortcut. Like but when you see wholly new things, oh, yeah. there's a little more processing there. But yeah, once you, you see don't it, know how to Yeah, I don't you don't initially yeah. know how to look at it. Yeah. So Hello. TCO. Hi. Oh, um, uh, you're muted. Can't hear you. Surprisingly. <laughs> wow, deep cut. Yeah, burn. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh he's no. having some problems. Oh, no, no. TCL, come hey, usually this fix them and come back. Products. Come on. Uh, come on, you uh, can do it. At least one per show. Darn. Wow, you can, uh, you can feel the sadness for that? coming off him in waves. <laughs> oh. uh, Rose? <laughs> Yeah, be TCL head. for a second. I can't talk. Uh, I, be him? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. What would he ask? Um, hey guys, look at this cool model I just made. It's a rabbit. The... Oh. He can't. <laughs> Wait, he, that's all I know about him. Tell you he's not an artist. He's, a, he's an engineer. But, uh, yes. Rose, uh, you, can, you can go ahead with your question or uh, comment. Uh, all right. Um... So something I heard about a few years ago, and I'm not sure the validity of it, because I never actually looked into it myself, but I heard that uh, in the Hydron Collider that they were doing something with some particles and smashing them together as they do. And usually uh, what happens is they test it. It happens just as they expect it. They go back to testing. But in uh, this case, they smashed two of the particles together and they went against the laws of physics in some way and completely broke what they thought physics could do. And so now they're saying that physics may be confined to a certain area or only to certain particles. 
and that it doesn't apply to mm. everything, the laws of physics as Wait. we know them. Does, I've never heard of it. So, yeah, does anybody, yeah. Have any, does anybody have any further information about this? Yeah, because like not, I said, I'm not certain about that. Yeah. I could look it up. I could yeah, look it we up should look it Look it up, and either we can talk about it uh, we may, if we have time, or link it to the Discord. Because well, that's interesting say, if that's true. Yeah, and if that's true, what I was going to say is, um, would you take that as something supporting the idea of a uh, simulation or going against it? Would it be a glitch that says this could be a simulation because look at this glitch, or it's going against the rules and the set path that it has so that disproves it what would you say here's the thing first of all science is purpose is to discover things about reality that it didn't know previously so it's not it's not outside of the realm of, of imagination for science to yeah. discover something that it didn't previously know was possible that's that's the entire endeavor that's what it's for yeah that's uh, what scientists second, love to figure out or to yes. see oh my Secondly, god it didn't do what we expected Secondly, the reason simulation theory isn't actually a theory and is a hypothesis because, uh, the, like, a theory is something like the theory of gravity, which has a model for actually how it works. It, it mm. involves a model. It, it involves a like a conceptual like this is how this thing operates, and then you you know you have experiments to test against that model, and it says okay if this model is accurate then this this is how uh then this is how this thing will um will you stop bothering the guests uh then, then, then this is how this thing will uh play out and so you can tell how the you know the fidelity of your theoretical model based on how well the experiments match up with uh with what the model predicts um so the problem with that is that we wouldn't we don't have any sort of theoretical model of simulation theory, even if we have the idea, hey, it could just be a simulation, um, unless we go a little bit deeper and have like, you know, if if it's a simulation, we predict it'll behave this way, then uh, we don't have any way to test it or reinforce it. I think Campbell oh, that's a, really a good quick question. comment on that. Yeah, it's just, you, it might be a simulation when you dream you're in VR and you wake up and you're in VR. It's kind of like, whoa, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect. Okay, uh, TCL. Okay, you can hear me. Yay! Yay! Okay, it worked. Loud and clear. Um, so there's a, there's a fun tie-in with the simulation hypothesis and the end of the universe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a a physical proper it's not really a constant because it it change well it's it's a relationship between the minimum amount of energy required to do the simplest bit of computation erasing a bit joining a two computation paths and a few other things okay and that limit is based on the temperature of the device doing the computation well okay. the coldest thing you can practically get um without you know having very very cool you know cold cryogenic cooling systems is going to be about the temperature of deep space with no stars currently oh. you know you're out in deep space mm -hmm. and that's a couple degrees kelvin from the cosmic microwave background radiation but over time okay. as space expands the cosmic microwave background radiation will get redshifted further and further towards radio and eventually after quite a long period of time the cosmic microwave background radiation temperature is really only going to be like tiny fractions of a degree kelvin um not quite but almost zero um and at that point this this limit the the landau limit will be much much smaller and so the amount of computation that you can get for a given amount of energy will be many orders of magnitude smaller than it is today mm. um this is the oh. theoretical minimum we're not even close to this minimum with our computers so sure, sure. with the best possible computers and you know that you can construct in this universe you might get close to the landau limit um and at that point the temperature is going to really matter and so at the end of the universe you could conceivably construct a computer that is able to do orders of magnitude more computation than what we can do now with orders of magnitude less energy and to the point where you I would see. construct these computers around supermassive black holes because they're the only thing left oh, and consume the absolute oh. minute <laughs> amounts of of radiation emitted from their Hawking radiation over extremely long periods of time 
and very slowly simulate a universe with a lot of people, you know, a lot of conscious minds in it. Um, and some of the other the other question, you know, things there is is you get some interesting knock-ons where you could potentially have these computers distributed throughout the entire visible universe because at every every black hole that's still close enough together to be visible after everything else has gone past the uh, the light the edge the, the, the edge horizon, of the visible the universe um, oh. the event horizon at the from the acceleration of the universe um, and all of I those see. regardless of their distance apart could communicate in effectively per, you know perceptually for someone in the simulation real time because yeah. you, you're so, running the simulation so slow that light is faster mm -hmm. than your simulation. So the simulation is running really slow, but because it's a simulation and it's going, it's it's going along. Everybody inside of it doesn't perceive how slow it is. Everything's just normal, mm -hmm. every day. Um, and then this this also gets into the um, the complexity argument, which is you can hide a lot of the complexity until someone looks. Yeah. So. Your scaling sure. factor is not Mechanic. the size of the simulation, it's the amount of conscious minds. So mm -hmm. it's like occlusion culling, right? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's it's yeah. the amount of concurrent users that you have in your simulation that determines the expense because you only have to render at detailed scales the the perceptions of those inhabitants. Yeah. Um, and as so you increase uh, this this is just a this is a very dramatic picture of the deep future. I really <laughs> like the the, yeah. the the image of that. Uh, I'm I'm curious. So like if that if that's the case, if the computational limit is the number of conscious minds that are observing the the universe, uh, what um, what happens when there's too many? When the when the load outweighs the uh, you go slower. Outweighs the capacity. You do the simulation oh. slower. That's an interesting concept. I never really thought about that. And I think I've heard Eve you talk about this before, but it never that. really hit me. That, oh. oh, I guess they do. They do time oh, the time dilation. dilation. Yeah, they? the time dilation. They yeah. go slower. They, everything happens slower when there's two yeah. people. They do exactly yeah. that. Yeah. They slow mechanics everything down. Potentially, doesn't quantum mechanics make a difference when you're observing something or not? Yeah, yeah, observing is observing is a bit of a misnomer there. Um, it has to do with, oh. uh, with measurement. Um, so it doesn't have to, it doesn't require a conscious observer. It just needs another piece of the universe to measure an effect in order for that effect to, to break, to, uh, collapse the, um, or collapse the waveform. Wave function. Of the, yeah, the wave function and the possibility of wave function. Uh, it, Verona? I was, was going to say, me. simply put, it means you have to measure stuff with other stuff and smash it together. That's what it means by observing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Kind of. Simpli that it's very oversimplifying it. Hey TCL, where, what can I read if I want to read more about this idea? Because I think cause um, I, I love this idea, but it, it's pretty complex. Yeah. So this particular one is actually from I don't know what reading uh, for this, but there's a YouTube channel um, okay. called Isaac Arthur. It's a uh, science fiction and futurism with Isaac Arthur, okay. and the guy has fairly long, like out, I don't know, forty minute to an hour long videos, and quite often on a variety of futurism topics. Um, there's things about the civilization, the end of the universe, which covers, you know, um, black hole supercomputers. Um, but there's also a whole bunch of other stuff about like launch technologies and like for, um, and orbital habitats and everything and things that would happen between now and end of the universe simulation computers. So it's a really good YouTube channel. I, I, uh, I enjoy the videos. Um, and, okay. but there's, there's one, I think it's, there's def there's a series I think it is on civilizations the end of the universe, um, and he covers oh, that sort okay. of thing. And well, there I'll, are I'll look at that and I'll probably try to link it. Um, but thank you. That actually sounds like it has a lot more cohesion and structure than most people's uh, models of how simulation uh, th that sort of simulation would work. That's cool. Um, hey, great bond blonde elf, welcome. Hey, how you doing? Um, so I'm going to follow on from TCL's point a little bit, and I uh, okay. promise I will, I will get around the world to the point. Basically, uh, when I was back in graduate school, somebody came up to me and said, hey, you do a lot of simulations. What's the probability that we're in the matrix? And I said, well, I don't know, but if we are in the matrix, here's the two things that I would see. One, as I look further and further into like the deeper parts of the universe, I'll find a size scale, a limited size scale, whereby 
uh, shorter than that, and we cannot, we no longer interact with uh, with particles or with matter. That something will be undefined okay. on that scale. And the second thing that I will do is that I will make it so that if an individual is not directly observing a part of the universe, that that part of the universe will devolve into essentially a, a wave state. But I'll, I'll be able to okay. do a, a probable, a, a, a non-probabilistic, um, non-stochastic. Um, fluid dynamics model of it, which is way, way cheaper. And both of these things will allow me to make a universe that doesn't, where the computational time doesn't go to infinity, even as the size goes to infinity. And by the way, that's the one we live in. It's, you know, the, the universe <laughs> yeah. is defined in this way. And basically right, their response... Things. And their response to me was, well, that may be so, but the anthropic principle kills your argument because there's only, you know, we don't actually have a defined probability for the idea that we live in that universe to begin with. We don't actually have an idea of what possible universes there are beyond that. I could say, well, there's the ball bearing universe where everything is stochastic, everything is just hard particles hitting each other, and everything is a Monte Carlo simulation. But I don't really have an idea of what other universes there could be. So laying a probability that we're in a, in, we're in a simulation becomes difficult. And I wonder, um, since that time to this, that was probably the early 2000s, has anyone done any work to try to uh, circumscribe the number of universes that could exist such that we could lay like a prior probability on the idea that we're living in the one that happens to be the best for simulation. Like, does anybody know what the, you know, what the underlying probability is or what the universes that could hang together look like? I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, okay, I obviously, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a physicist by any means. I don't even know what it would take to even try to measure that sort of thing. training is another science, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, um, <laughs> I, there, not to, not to avoid your question, but you mentioned the anthropic principle, and that hasn't been described for our audience yet. Can you tell yeah, us I was what that say, is? I got back from being AFK, and I felt like I was listening to someone on Star Trek talking to another scientist. I, I didn't, oh yeah, no. a lot of those I didn't. <laughs> so, 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 so the underlying principle is basically um, this idea that uh, the, the, the stronger anthropic principle is this: like, wouldn't it be interesting if the universe had a different Boltzmann's constant or something like that? And then you would say, well, that universe wouldn't hang oh. together. There could be no human beings in it. There could be no, you know, cohesive matter. And if there's no cohesive matter, there's no human beings. And then you would say, well, of course we're not in that universe because. We're talking to each other. We are humans. We are cohesive matter. So therefore, obviously, we didn't end up in that one. And so the idea of the anthropic principle is basically that. It's like, well, you know, if if what you were saying is true, I have a counterfactual, which is we're talking about it. There's no us to talk about it in the universe where what you're saying is true. So therefore, obviously, it's not. And you can incorporate that into some gotcha argument about the way the universe works. Okay. So anthropic being like anthropology, like that, that. The yeah, idea. like human, like hu human, human based, the observer based, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I I don't know the answer to your question. Uh, the only thing that sounds similar to it is that when we were doing research, we found that someone had kickstarted a uh, study about um, mm -hmm. trying to find um, the quantization mm -hmm. of of reality, right? Because in order for reality yeah. to be similar. If reality is simulated, then it's um, made out of something quant quantifiable. Like our computer simulations are are made out of, in the, you know, at the very bottom bits, you know, ones and zeros, um, you know, along with with uh, other physical factors. But basically, uh, we would need to see some sort of um, discrete. Uh, well, and maybe you mentioned this um, discrete uh, quantization at the at the very like very very bottom. You mentioned a. a mm -hmm. Uh, size issue, but just be, but you seem to say it in in terms of like that's the we can't see any smaller than that. Not that that's the unit of uh, quantification that our universe is actually made of, right? Yeah, that that at least, and I you know the, the, the essentially. The, the experiments down to the sort of Planck length and deep scattering of other uh, things, these are a little bit conflated because the one idea of I can't see down to that size scale unless I specifically send probes and the only probes small enough are other subatomic particles. So I, I go ahead and I smash subatomic particles together. And what I find is that there's sort of a size scale limitation. There's sort of a Planck length past which um, 
these things can't interact in the same way. Uh, the, the, okay. Like there's, there's, a, there's a fundamental size scale limitation. Um, and the realistically, that would... strings. No, that, that's <laughs> oh, fair. Man. That's fair yeah. because it, because ultimately, like, I then have I then have something that's easy to simulate. It was it was all about basically something that's easy to simulate. If I have a simulation, what am I really going to do so that as I make that simulation bigger and bigger, um, my my processing time doesn't also go to infinity? And those were the two things I came up with. And then I immediately said, well, that's that's what we've got. No. Okay. Um, I'll link you to the Kickstarter, actually, and see what you say about it, because, uh, yeah, they, they, there were these people that wanted to study whether um, we we're in a simulation, and they kickstarted a study in order to do it, and I can't read their updates because I'm not, because uh, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't participate in the Kickstarter, but um, I'd be interested to, or I'd be interested to see if it, like, actually has, like, if it seems plausible or not. Um, oh, man. Yeah. It'd be crazy, uh, if, a bunch of on, It'd be crazy yeah, yeah, if a bunch you. of Kickstarter backers were the first people to hear from scientists that were in a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be pretty great. In a private update. <laughs> and then yeah. they would just tell all the, the, the rich people and then they'd use it to scam us. Oh, well, there you go. Hmm. hmm. Anyway, thanks, Blondel. Uh, Lousy. That means all currency is digital currency. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the second part of my of my thoughts on this part of the reason that I was um, very fascinated with it. Uh, and it goes into actually a different argument for simulation theory other than the one that's been made, which is if it can be done, it is being done. Uh, my argument for a simulation of some sort is actually both, uh, I guess, moral or theological. It would be somewhere in there. Uh, and it's based on, oddly enough, two, uh, two ideas that I want to pitch to people. One is uh, MMORPGs exist. And two is like the universe that we live in is really horrific in a lot of ways. So mm. I'll, I'll get to both of those. So first of all, uh, MMORPGs, anybody who's played them knows how they work. You start out as a level one, you gain experience as you play, you have to you know, obtain money, you have to continually improve your character to take more challenges, and then eventually you cap out and you roll an alt. So the very idea of an MMORPG in and of itself suggests that uh, if we are living in a simulation it is an mmorpg type simulation there are we exist somewhere outside of this reality and uh i'll get to the theological implication in a second but we exist somewhere outside and we choose to come here to experience this whatever this is you know life the mmorpg uh the second argument is uh the moral one in that uh for anyone and this is this has stumped a lot of you know uh theologians as well when you have to explain the idea of uh things like uh sometimes babies are born with horrifically painful diseases and immediately die uh, there are all sorts of horrific things that happen, uh, war crimes. I won't get into it, but I mean, you, all you have to do is search for like bad news and you'll find out that horrifically sure. horrible things have happened to people in all these different ways. And so mm -hmm. the common argument is that, well, you know, we can't understand the reasons why, but uh, th this is an argument for, uh, for uh, any religion, that there is a creator out there who created this universe and created us. And so for me personally, it means that we have to uh, accept one of two things. One is that the creator is okay with this stuff, which terrifies me, or two, that the creator, the creators are okay with it because uh, it is a simulation and it is not real. Yeah. And by that, I mean, if you are in an MMORPG, some really bad stuff happens to MMORPG characters. Like World of Warcraft is an example. You could go in there and you could get corpse camped. You could get killed repeatedly uh, on a PVP server. That is an experience that no yeah. one would ever opt into initially, but people would play Warcraft and intentionally do it because, yeah, it was hell for the character getting killed over and over, but they were not the character. They were playing that character. So well, I think basically the, to, to bring this... Well, let me bring this home real quick okay, and then sorry, we can ahead. discuss it because that's what I'm discussing. It. So, but basically, the, for me personally, I can't accept the idea that uh, there is a creator who would be okay creating a universe where suffering of the magnitude that exists in this universe exists. That person would be... Or that, that, that entity would be horrible. Uh, so I have two choices. I can believe that either there is no entity at all, and which is the, the, the perspective that there's no afterlife or anything. We're just existence, right? It's, it's atheist or whatever. Yeah, we're Alternately, emergent. Yes, we're emergent. Alternately, uh, there is a design, but the design is intentionally designed to be challenging uh, because we exist somewhere beyond this and are uh, 
uh, basically sit that that's the real us. So what happens to us here, even suffering, we've accepted because it was in the terms of service when we signed up for life, the game. I so see. those are the only two, oh, those are the only two ideas I'm comfortable with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, and um, at this point in I my think... life, I can't accept any others. So I would be curious what people think. Um, and that's pretty much it. That, that was my idea. So I, I would like people to. That one kind of comes uh, comes back to the definition of self, though, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you you know, if you don't have any memories of being any other being, and some other being in another dimension is like, oh, I consented to this for you, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm not necessarily going to accept that that this other being that that is, you know, di has different memories, Your different player. perceptions. Right, yeah. like I'm, I'm not necessarily going to agree that I am that same being, and so to to say that I've consented. Nor to this do our tunes in World of Warcraft. Is... Like our my World of Warcraft uh, tune did not sign up to be killed repeatedly, yeah. but that's what happened to him. Right. Sorry, man. So this is. <laughs> I so was having fun. The, so the question is, like, where does suffering exist? It exists wherever there is pain, and the subject experiences pain. It doesn't matter whether the subject is inside of a simulation or outside of a simulation. Like the pain, the pain exists. Like that. that that part can't be real or not real. Like there's either pain there or there's not. And so I don't know. To you, you can you can joke about how um, like a, a World of Warcraft character, you know, oh, uh, can feel pain from being killed over and over again. But it obviously doesn't actually experience pain. There's no there's no actual subjective reality occurring there. And I think that's that's what? kind of the like. That's where reality when yeah. it comes to consciousness well, so, it matters. But just to be clear, I'm not it, so I'm not making the argument. I'm not saying this is true or not. I'm just saying it's the only argument I could accept. For me, it's between atheism or the belief that this is a simulation that was designed to have suffering built in as part of the challenge. Uh, I can't mm -hmm. accept anything else. That's me. Other people have different ideas about religion and you know the afterlife and that. But anyway, sure. I just thought that was way, that, that's my argument for simulation hold on. that we're in a Everyone simulation. Stop. We're running uh -huh. out of time uh -huh. actually, and so we're not oh, going we to be able to get all, to all four people. Um, mm. I, I think I, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, so <sighs> yeah, but. Uh, I don't know. This is a really good topic. Um, let's continue mm -hmm. talking about it after after the show, but like just casually, because because uh, we want to maintain a, a decent um, we want to maintain a consistent time point. But I appreciate your thoughts, Lousy. Thanks thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, Rose. Uh, yeah. Hi. So I'll be quick. Um, what I said earlier. First off, I completely misunderstood the point of a hydron collider. <laughs> That's the first thing I learned. Okay. Um, okay. You've been doing second, research. Uh huh. Oh, you've oh been yeah. Doing so research what, since you were you were in line. I'm sorry. What I, what I found out was um, actually this happened a few months ago. I don't know if it happened once a few years ago and then again a few months ago, but um, at the hydron collider or the research lab near Geneva, what happened was when uh, using the Hydron Collider, something popped up that looked like it was a, like a not in line with how the other particles interacted with physics. And so they called it something bumpy. And now they're using that as a basis to say that some particles don't go along with the same laws of physics as others. That's that's what that some was. I was a little- bumpy. Mm. So I'll look this up, we could look up bumpy particles. I don't know if that'll figure if you'll find it that way. I, uh, but yeah, you could try. That's, Just that's real quick, Blandoff, do you know oh. anything about this? Bumpy particles. To be honest, I haven't really, uh, I haven't really kept up with the LHC and what they're coming out with. Are you saying that mm -hmm. is is it one of these things that violates CP or CPT inversion? Is is this is this what's Rose? going on? Oh come on! I know that that was one of the things they were looking for. Uh, Rose. Um, is you know the answer I'm to that? not exactly sure what they were looking for. This happened at the GERN. So if you want to like look up what they've been doing, yeah. and you can do that. All I know is the service level right. stuff I looked up. Okay. Not to be concerned I'm gonna, with, not, not to be I, I'm not smart about CRN. this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that off channel. Let me see what I can come up with. I'm a civilian. Cool. All right. PK. Um, oh, I, I want to bring up something on, just to think about. Uh, okay. So in the past year, I haven't thought I've always, for a while, I've thought simulation theory is possible. It's not likely, but it's something that is within the realm of possibility. And in the last year, I haven't found it more likely, but the ramifications have, I've thought about them a bit. And 
I've been pretty much atheist for a, quite a number of years, but thinking of just the slight possibility that some future humans are simulating us uh, makes me kind of start behaving in different ways because we could be... Do you, do you guys think if, if this is a simulation, mm. there's people watching us? Is that basically so? And if we... And then when we die, do we... Get, Even when can, I'm naked? Is there a possibility of being pulled out of the simulation? Do they have, like, I don't know, robot bodies and we can go and, and inhabit it? Or is it just like they're just watching us and we have no hope of anything after? But I don't know. It's just if it was actually simulated, like, is there a possibility of an afterlife there? Or mm. just are we part of a show? Yeah. And should we care whether yeah. Yeah. What they... Is it is it VR or is it The Sims? Well, yeah, yeah. It's an end game. The show within <laughs> a simulation that is within a simulation, which is also on a show. <laughs> Well, VR, that's a, yeah, that's a VR. Yeah. Yeah. You really think about it more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's that's kind of interesting, and like it also sounds pretty oppressive. But it also kind of makes me wonder, like, it, if it's a bit there people are watching, me. um, if if people are watching our simulation, are they like how closely are they paying attention? And like, is it like yeah. a yeah, is it like a show that plays out? Are they taking bets on who wins elections? Like, are they you know are they watching like? I, you know what 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 can they see and like what pieces of information are they putting together um oh man i don't know that also is the simulation really... just this big grotesque twitch oh <laughs> god <laughs> um, <laughs> can we win yeah, can honestly... we actually win the simulation and when we die we get to oh. go on so that's kind of like it's very very unlikely in my mind but it's enough to make me kind of start thinking like maybe i should keep this in the back of my mind <laughs> I, I guess Elon so. Musk is the player. But, I don't know. That, that's, like, I, mean, like, I see what you're saying, but it all sounds hideous to me. Um, so I don't know if that's... If that, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, Igrim. Well, my controller is officially broken. That's why I was... I, I see that. Oh, kind of that's kind of fire. Around. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, hey. um, so... With the um, so my sister likes to torture Sims sometimes in The Sims. Oh, mm -hmm. so just kind of going up to what um, <laughs> I, I don't know who actually said that, but who was who was uh, talking about um, Lousy, just like yeah. kind of the um, just kind of like the suffering in the world. I like, guess uh, there's a chance that just some person doesn't actually realize that consciousness is a thing and wants to have a little game with all this and that's a little disturbing to think about now that i think about it i probably shouldn't have brought that up um, <laughs> but yeah i mean and... it sounds similar to what pk is saying too that like it's just you know it's a, it's a game that that we're like we're like we're like rats in a maze or something and and we just have to uh well, play actually, through the game one quick point that i want to make just because i forgot to bring it up earlier uh so it's the idea so this goes back to the logical point but the idea that all afterlives basically suggest that uh it's paradise right so in paradise there's there's no there's no suffering there's no want there's no, no you, you want for nothing right in the ideal afterlife and that's yeah. great but it's also really really boring like mm -hmm. horribly boring so that is the reason that we would come here and play life because there is no challenge <laughs> in the afterlife so we roll a tune in life and go do that and and the suffering is part of the appeal because it is a challenge yeah. that we don't get in the afterlife that exists we don't have well, access to our well, normal well, memories but when we go back we can remember some of this or just watch it back i guess that's right or we even have yeah, a score yeah. like we have our life has a score and then we tally it up and mm -hmm. use those resources into our next life which is kind of oh. a little like reincarnation uh, Morty. yeah, yeah. Uh, so. well, well, and that well, that thought that Lousy said about like suffering in the afterlife not being there, like like I I I I've known that or heard that, like I know that's a thing, but also I found myself thinking like I wanted to be like a, a smartass and say, well, what if in the parent reality there isn't pain, like like what if mm -hmm. that's just a concept that exists here? Right. And it's like, well, oh well, there, there I go playing into that. Oh, <laughs> just well, instinctively, that's it was too. instinct for me. It seemed like. I mean that that I think that probably answers Lousy's question, where like there might be another scenario where they can't even comprehend the concept of pain, so like suffering yeah. doesn't even mean anything to them, right? That seems yeah. like it could or be a possibility. Or as with MMORPGs, it's part of the appeal. It's a feature. It's like experience suffering. It's a bullet on the back of the box. Well, not so much oh, the boy. Like yeah, the, that's well, right. Yeah, 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 Dark Souls. <laughs> 
Um, I, I meant for those watching, not those playing, but anyway. Um, okay, we're, we're about ready to get done. Was there something you were going to say? Else? Me? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just kind of wanted to, like, and now it is slipping my head. But, like, but, um, hold on a second. <laughs> um, if, like, what? just kind of touching on the idea of suffering, like, why? Like, I just kind of like yeah. almost even adding on to what was saying before, like, how would like, what? Oh yeah, now I remember. Would so would all animals be like entities in a higher oh, yeah, that's we dimension that yeah. are now in the simulation, or are they all are yeah. they all NPCs? That's yeah, long that's a... debated, but the concept of NPCs gives us a framework to talk about it now. But in the past, yeah. it was talked about as like automata was the word, right? Uh, and, well, and philosophical zombies. Oh, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's basically the but... the concept of of something that gives the impression of life, but is not ac itself actually experiencing qualia. So, so qualia mm. is like the you know the, your your perception, your subjective experiences, and a philosophical zombie would be something that appears to experience thing, but doesn't actually possess. You know, it's an empty husk. So very much like an NPC. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess that's a that's a question because I mean well, that's a question about animals too. I, I mean we have no reason to think they don't feel pain, but we since we can't feel it, oh I don't know maybe. And that's a question about we were talking that. about simulating consciousness earlier. That. That's a question about us simulating consciousness too. Like, how do we like the Turing test is a thing, right? But like, how do we know that it is consciousness if it appears to be consciousness? Is it really? Right. We can never get inside the mind of the consciousness to know. It's true, uh, but we can also simulate. Like, we can role play this out by like talking amongst ourselves. Like, I can challenge that you're a conscious being, and then we could actually. That's like, the thing. We don't even know if we don't know if each other is a consciousness, right? right? It's all exactly. The show. So, so basically, whatever standard you apply to other people to uh, grant them consciousness within your own mind, you'd basically I have see. to apply that uh, to another and then being. We get into, and then we get into the whole topic of like treating and giving androids rights and all of that stuff. Sure, that'll be interesting when that actually becomes, you know, <laughs> relevant. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we've. Uh, I think we've. We're about ready to wrap it up. Um, thanks, everybody, uh, for for participating tonight. Just yeah. you know, just one thing. Um, how do you know you're not dreaming right now? Okay. Let's like have our. Oh. I can, can, let's have yeah, our. Uh, exactly. I pinched myself <laughs> and it hurt. Electronics you can't read don't work in, you can uh, in dreams. I can read yeah, electronics and machines. Nose, you can still mm -hmm. uh, also, you can drive your car um, from okay, the back seat in dreams. Coming up for a group photo. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. That's a, that's a really, really common dream people have. Oh man, TCL, you talked about exactly what we hoped you would. I, uh, yeah, I, I figured. You, I was trying to, I was trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out exactly. That's what great. I mean. Like I got some, I got some good, uh, good material I, on this topic, and I couldn't articulate it to Papa the other night, uh, quite yes. like you were able to, because I got forgot all about the slowing down thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time dilation is a neat concept. Yeah. Yeah, I also like the beating, finally beating light speed by just going slower. <laughs> time dilation. Yeah. Yeah, just accepting it. Did we mention the Matrix at all? Did, or did we just mention yeah, that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Good job, everybody. Yeah, good job. Yeah, no, <laughs> um, hey, 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 no, no, yeah. no worries. It, it, the thing is, the thing is absolutely time limited. It's an interesting question uh, that that uh, this whole thing is a very interesting.